Good afternoon, church. How are you today? Welcome to our Sunday online service. You know what, church? This online service is just a proof that nothing and no one can stop us from worshiping our God. Amen? Why don't we start with a prayer? Almighty and loving Abba Father, you are the source of true and everlasting joy. We praise you for your goodness that is beyond compare. We worship you for your wisdom that is beyond understanding. You have given us, Jesus, the best of heaven. You've restored the brokenhearted. You've healed the sick and wounded. You revealed yourself through us with your love and favor. How great and loving you are, Lord. Continue to set our hearts on fire as we, your children, sing praises to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Come on, church. Let's worship Jesus.
love for me. Thank you, Lord, for loving me. Thank you, Lord, for your love that is sweeter than wine. A love that is so pure, it never runs out, it never runs dry. I continue to sing praise to you, Jesus. I continue to sing praise to you, my King.
loving kindness to us. You deserve all our praises, our worship and adoration forever and ever. Amen. Hello Church, we have now come to our Holy Communion, so kindly make sure that you have your bread and cup with you as we remember the death of our Lord Jesus Christ. And so now, let us remember that before Jesus was betrayed, He gathered His disciples in an upper room. He took the bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to His disciples and said, This is my body, which shall be broken for you. Do this as often in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often in remembrance of me. And so church, that bread that you're holding right now symbolizes the body of Jesus Christ. And every stroke, every stripe, and every lash that was placed on his body has brought healing on us today. And the cup symbolizes His blood, and every drop of His blood washed away all our sins, past, present, and future, so that today we stand righteous, favored, and holy before God the Father. So together, let's raise the bread and declare in faith, Lord Jesus, You are my Savior. Your body was broken crushed and wounded for me. Today, I am healed and I am whole. From the top of my head to the soles of my feet, I am completely healed. I receive this Jesus. Thank you for loving me. Amen. Let me take the bread. now raise the cup and together we declare Lord Jesus you are my Savior your blood was shed for the forgiveness of all my sins today I am righteous I am favored and I am holy because of your blood I received this Jesus thank you Jesus for loving me and I love you too Amen let me drink the cup God bless you always, church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. And we know that at this moment, church, you are so excited to give your tithes and offering. But please be reminded that when we give our tithes and offering, it is not an obligation. It is actually a privilege. It comes from a revelation that Jesus is truly working in our life and that he is working mightily. And if we act on that revelation by faith, then according to God's word, surely, surely, nothing would hinder the floodgates of heaven from opening up and pouring out blessing upon blessing into your life. Isn't that good news? But for those of you, dear brothers and sisters, who don't have that revelation yet, don't be disheartened. We are one with you in prayer and in faith that as you know Jesus and you draw closer to him, through His Word, all of these things will be revealed to you in His perfect time. But right now, for those who have their envelopes ready and excited to give, why don't you join me in a prayer? Let us pray. O gracious and most heavenly Father, Your love endures forever, and Your mercies are new every day. That is why we can come boldly to You with the little that we have, our tithes and offering, confident that you will bless us 30, 60, and 100 fold. We can come boldly because we have Jesus whose finished work has availed our blessed life. We give our tithes today not to be blessed, but because we are already blessed. May we continue to be living testimonies of your greatness and goodness. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.
Happy Easter everyone! Welcome again to our Undeserved Favor Ministry Sunday service. And it's Resurrection Sunday. Isn't that amazing that when Jesus suffered and died, three days later, He rose from the dead, victorious over the powers of evil, over the powers of death. Praise the Lord that Jesus rose again from the dead to life to enforce the finished work that He completed on the cross. Amen? Praise God. And so I'm so thankful, I'm so grateful that you've joined us today online uh, in, the, in the worship a while ago. Um, bless all of you for that worship that you've participated with, even to, with the communion. And I praise God for such a wonderful reminder um, for the past week, no? for the Holy Week, that indeed we are loved, so loved by God the Father that He gave us His Son, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. And so, brothers and sisters, I'm so glad also that you have really uh, given this time you know, to, to celebrate the goodness of our God through uh, our worship. And now you're about to prepare yourselves to receive God's revelation of His wonderful truth from His Word. And so, praise God for that and, and let's prepare ourselves. You know? So, before we start, brothers and sisters, let's um, do this declaration that we have always been doing in, in UFM, the de declaration of who we are in Christ. So, why don't you join me? No? Hand on the chest, declaring the truth of who we are in Christ. Together we say, In Christ, I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. Again, in Christ, I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. And why is that, brothers and sisters? Because you and I are in Christ exactly. Because without Christ, we're nothing. We cannot do anything and we are doomed. But in Christ, with Christ in our life, all these wonderful truths, the finished work of Jesus Christ is being manifested through the love, the blessing, the favor. That's why we come out victorious winners. Blessed to be a blessing. Amen. One more time. Let's do this together. In Christ, I am greatly blessed. I am highly favored. I am deeply loved. I am a winner. I am blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, for such a victorious life and privileged life that you've given us. Amen. Brothers and sisters, Resurrection Sunday is a great reminder, especially during this time of crisis, that indeed, what Jesus did when He suffered and even to the point of giving up His life did not happen, all these things did not happen for nothing because He rose from the dead and today He is able to enforce. Now say enforce. He is able to enforce the finished work that He did, He accomplished on the cross. And so, what does that mean today, brothers and sisters? It means today that in spite of all the crisis, all the suffering, this, this calamity that we're going through, Christ is still in the crisis. In fact, that's the title of our message today. Amen? So, Christ is in the crisis. So, that's why God is reminding you today in this Resurrection Sunday to rise above and reign over the crisis that's that's rampaging all over the world, that Jesus is your confidence, that because Jesus is with you, is with me, we are confident that Christ is with us to bring about victory every single day for the rest of our life. Amen? Praise God. And that itself is already good and amazing news to remind us today in this Resurrection Sunday. And so, brothers and sisters, I, I'm so excited also to point out to you that, you know, all these things that's, which are happening have a very good purpose for God's glory. In fact, if you understand who you are in Christ, you should not be limited by what you see. You should not be limited by what, by what you understand. You should go beyond your understanding. In fact, the Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He shall direct your paths. In other words, brothers and sisters, you are sure that God really is your victory. He wants you to have confidence in Jesus Christ. Amen? 
Now, let's talk about our calamity today. No? Because it's easy to talk about COVID-19. No? And here's the thing. In this COVID-19, there are actually two types of carrier. Right, let's talk about carrier, no? The one who carries COVID-19. There are two types. No? First carrier is the physical carrier. And I'm sure you're familiar with this guy. He's been into the news all over the place. He was carrying the virus physically. So that's the first type. The second type is the emotional carrier. You know, the, this person carries the virus in the emotion, not in the physical. And so the thing is, you could be a physical carrier or you say, I'm not positive. Okay, very good. But if you've been spreading no, the fear of the virus and, you know, like you've been telling people about reminding them about how, da how, how dangerous this, this virus is and, and uh, how it's difficult to, uh, you know, there's no vaccine, real vaccine yet. You know, if you're that kind of person, you are an emotional carrier. And I'm telling you, if a person, you know, when you stay away from a person who is positive, physical, a physical carrier, it's equally important that you stay away also from an emotional carrier person because they have actually the same effect. In fact, more deadly no, is this emotional carrier because, you know, some people, they have sleepless nights because of the, the news and what they hear about the, this crazy virus that's going around and how easy you can be infected. And so, you know, friends, I hope that you don't become any of those two, physical carrier or emotional carrier, because both are just not helping our brothers and sisters and they're not encouraging. So, um, I hope you watch that. Now, Talking about the virus, you know, the truth is, if you look at the Bible here, I've been reading the Bible and you will find in the Bible, you will discover that actually the virus is not the issue. It's actually not the issue, my friend. The real issue in the Bible, and the Bible says it very clearly, is we will find that in Ephesians 6 verse 12. Let's, let's go and read uh, Ephesians 6 verse 12. And what's really is... The, the issue here. Is it really the virus? It says in Ephesians 6.12, For our struggle is not against human opponents, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers in the darkness around us, and evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. What does that tell us, brothers and sisters? You know, the true issue is not really the virus. Because the fact that the the doctors have been telling us about, you know, keep your body healthy, boost your immune system, and you're protected. So, the virus is not the problem. The issue is actually beyond the physical. And actually, the Bible, as we have read, is, it's a spiritual issue. In other words, at the end of the day, it's actually Satan, the enemy, who's working against God's people and the people all over the world and sowing fear and making people, you know, feel insecure about their life, about their health, finances, and about their future. It's affecting even relationships. And what's the, that's what the enemy is doing. No? You and I are being victimized if you're not careful. Because you could be focusing so much on the virus and you will find... No, and I know people, no, some people have been so focused on the virus, trying to, you know, uh, protect themselves and stay away and, and, you know, put all the necessary precautionary measures. And I'm not saying it's bad. And yes, it's very good. That's very important. But they're so focused on the virus that even if they've been doing a lot of protection and, and precautionary measures, they're still afraid. They're still scared. They're still anxious about life. No? And so, see, so... So I understand that the issue is not about the virus. Don't focus on the virus. Understand that it goes beyond fit the physical realm. It's a spiritual battle all these years. And this is one of those battles that the enemy is waging war against God. And you and I, brothers and sisters, because we have Christ in us, be 
aware and be watchful, be on guard because you know the real battle is and it's not the virus. And so, I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell you something that you, know, you might call crazy, you know, a crazy truth, crazy reality. But you know, the reality is, I don't know if you, can, you, can, you will be able to take this, but the truth is, we are all carriers. Yes, we are all carriers. And the big question is, what do you carry? What do you carry? Now, you, you may ask me, Pastor, is it carry the virus or what? No. Let's go to the, main, the real issue. Again, it's not about the virus. It's about this spiritual battle that's waging war and we are God's conduit. Okay? The enemy is waging war against us using the virus but actually he is, the enemy is attacking our faith. And that's why I'm saying we are all carriers because actually it depends on what you carry. So what do you carry? Do you carry fear? Or do you carry faith? Which is which, brothers and sisters? You know, I hope you realize by this time, we've been in this situation, this calamity for like how many weeks already, no? Or like three months. And, you know, people are still counting on the cases. And it's good, it's important that we should be watching, no? And we're hoping that as it rises, it comes to a plateau, a stop, and then starts to decline, seeing less and less contamination and more recoveries. And that's our prayer. But the thing is, the real issue here is, in spite of this crisis, in spite of the spread of the virus, do you have faith? Are you still in faith? Or are you already fa fearful? And towards others, what do you spread? Fear or faith? In other words, brothers and sisters, my big question is, what are you infecting others with? When you are in a meeting, for example, um, you're with other people, you know, it's so, it's so amazing how easy you can infect others. Now, you've heard of stories about people getting infected in a meeting. When you're in a meeting, what are you infecting others with? What are you spreading in other words when you are in some celebrations you know whether virus or not it's always going to be some celebration or when you're with your family you know uh, you cannot you cannot stop it nobody is going anywhere so you might as well you know gather you know and what do you Spread. What are you infecting your family with? And what about in the social media? What are you infecting others? What are you spreading, brothers and sisters? So, the thing is, you can easily infect others. But be sure to infect them with God's love. So, brothers and sisters, I'm reminding you. You have a role to play here. You're not just a, an, an expectator. You're not just somebody who's watching the scenes, what's happening around you. Actually, God has called you to play an active role here. You're not just, you know, trying to make yourself protected, finding ways, you know, a, a defense, you know, a, a way to defend yourself from getting contaminated by this virus. Because actually, you are being called to not only put on the defenses, but actually make offenses. And this is one thing that I hope you will realize this Resurrection Sunday, brothers and sisters. Because last Friday, we, we celebrated the Good Friday. We remembered that Jesus suffered and died for our behalf. 
right? We benefited from that suffering and death of Jesus Christ. He was wounded so that, what happens? What's the effect of that stripes? That by Jesus stripes, the Bible said, we are healed. We receive healing. We receive wholeness by the wounds that Jesus suffered, okay? So, it was to our benefit. We receive that as a benefit. And with His blood, His blood was shed on that Friday so that all of our sins are forgiven, washed away completely. No? Our sins now taken away, we become as white, even whiter than snow. We receive that benefit by the suffering and death of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are recipient. But Resurrection Sunday came. What is this all about? Resurrection Sunday, when Jesus rose from the dead, He came to enforce what He finished. Okay? So in other words, He came to enforce, today, He's going to remind you that you have been healed, made whole, by the wounds that He suffered. That today, you shall not suffer condemnation and guilt, that there's no condemnation and curse for you, because all your sins have been forgiven and washed away. In other words, what you have left today because of the finished work of Jesus Christ is blessing and blessing and blessing. And that is what Jesus is enforcing today. He is here alive and well at the right hand of God the Father to enforce, to remind our Heavenly Father that as we go through suffering, as we, as we go through the difficulties, as we go through this crisis, He is reminding the Father that, Father, that beloved child of yours, I paid for his sin, that he will not suffer the curse of life, but blessing and favor from you. And that's what we need to be reminded today. Now, that, that, but that's not yet it. No, that's not all of it yet. Because the thing is, God's favor, God's blessing, the finished work of Jesus Christ does not stop with us. We today who have understood and received the goodness and the blessing and the favor of God, it does not stop with us. It will continue. God is going to use us and in fact has already used you one way or another so that this salvation, this redemption will continue to happen to others who have not experienced salvation and redemption by Jesus Christ. In other words, brothers and sisters, you and I today, we become the resurrection for others. In other words, what Jesus did 2,000 years ago, that Friday, when He suffered and He died, today, we enforce. Not only, no, as Jesus enforced it on our life, but we also, as conduit of God, partakers of God, we enforce it on others. We tell others, especially through our lives, through the testimonies that we have, that they also were included in that love of God, that they were included in that salvific, finished work of Jesus Christ. The suffering and the death of Jesus included, encompassed all people who will hear even these words today. Amen? So, understand that, brothers and sisters. We need to be reminded today that we are part and included of this salvation process. It's a compl Don't get me wrong. It's already done. It's completed. But there are more people who have not received. And that's why it will continue to happen to them. With you and, uh, you and me, it's already done. We enjoy this. We claim it every day. But to others, you are a carrier brothers and sisters. You are a carrier of the gospel of grace of Jesus Christ, of the finished work of Jesus Christ. So, when you are with people, whether physically or online, be aware and be conscious that you are a carrier. And get them infected. Because you are infectious. Get them infected with the love of God in their life. Spread the gospel. Talk about the goodness of God in your life through Jesus Christ. Make them feel that they are loved. Spread the good news. Encourage people by telling them that Jesus is alive today to enforce the finished work that He has completed on the cross. Amen? So, the big question probably in your mind is, how do I stay 
in this grace crown? How do I enforce? No? How do I make myself infectious? How do I continue to infect others with the love of God? How do I do that when in fact, you know, the cry for fear is growing louder each day? No? And of course, there's this additional anxiety about financial crisis that will, you know, come out from this calamity. So it's adding to that, to that problem, to that, to that um, level of anxiety that people are already experiencing. How do you and how do you and I stay grounded and, you know, enforce this love in spite of all this discouraging news? Let's look at the Bible, brothers and sisters, and see how do we continue no? to stand in victory during this time. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Let's start with verse 10. It says here, Finally, be strong in the Lord, relying on His mighty strength. What does that mean? Be strong in the Lord. God is actually reminding us that, you know, because it's a done deal, He has finished the work. Stand still, be strong, hold on. No? Be strong, hold on to God's word because you have the assurance. You have the confidence in Jesus Christ. In verse 11, it says here, Put on the whole armor of God so that you may be able to stand firm against the devil's strategies. Now, what does this mean? The devil's strategy, what do you do? Put on the whole armor. Why? Because, again, it's not about the virus. Look at, let's look at verse 12. Let's look at verse 12. It's not about the virus. For our struggle is not against human op uh, opponents, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers in the darkness around us, and evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. So you find here, it's not about the virus, it's about spiritual warfare. So, in other words, you really want to, have, to reign over and have victory over this crisis, and you will enjoy life, and after this whole you know, uh, calamity, you know, whatever is after this, you will come out victorious. What do you do? How do you continue becoming a, a good infection to others? An encouragement to others? Put on the whole armor of God. And so, that's very important, brothers and sisters. No? In fact, in verse 13, it says here, if you continue reading, For this reason, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to take a stand whenever evil comes. And when you have done everything, as in like everything, like reflecting on God's word, you know, meditating on God's word, you could, you will be able to stand firm. In other words, it says here that, you know, all you need to do, you do everything, all you need to do is put on, put on the armor of God and you will be able to stand firm and just, you know, reign over. In, it. in other words, you will not be shaken. You will not be des destroyed by the attacks of the enemy, especially during this time. And so, let's see, what's this armor of God, no? So that, and, and, and I know some of you are already very familiar. Let's, let's go through this. No? Let's read through verse 14. Stand firm, therefore, having fastened the first belt of truth around your waist. That's the first part of the whole armor, no? Belt of truth around your waist. And second is having put on the breastplate of righteousness. So, the belt of truth around your waist, breastplate of righteousness. And then in verse 15, and being firm-footed in the gospel of peace. That's on your feet, firm-footed in the gospel of peace. And then in verse 16, in addition to having clothed yourself with these things, having taken up the shield of faith. Now, there's this shield. It's a shield of faith with which you will be able to put out all flaming arrows of the evil one. And then verse 17, it says, also, okay, this is the, the fifth part. Take the helmet of salvation. And finally, the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of Christ or the Word of God. Now, you will find here, brothers and sisters, there are six parts. No? And let's look at the six parts. Okay, let's, let's um, look at here the, the six parts of the armor of God. Okay, here. You have the helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, shield of faith, feet of peace, all are defense items. 
Okay? They are on the defensive. In other words, they protect you. No? So, that's very important. There's the only one that's different here, the sword of the Spirit, which is an offense item. Now, look at it this way, brothers and sisters. God has given us five items, no? number of grace, five items for defense. Why is that? Because defense is critical. You know, in any game or battle, you need to have a strong defense. Because, you know, if the, the, the enemy is, is getting stronger, what the only thing that will stop the enemy from, you know, defeating you is your defense. Okay? And so, in this case, God wants us to really put on the defenses. No? It says here about the understanding of your helmet of salvation. In other words, He wants you to understand that you have been saved by grace and nothing can take away that salvation from you. You have been saved once and for all. No? And you need to put on that breastplate of, breastplate of righteousness because you, know, you are already righteous, made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. In other words, in, in, in the truth of who you are in Christ, you, have, you are loved by God, no? and the gospel of peace that, you know, you are already reconciled. You have peace with God. Do not doubt that. So, all these things, even the shield of faith, you know, which shall take away all the arrows of the enemy, or, or defend you from the arrows of the enemy, you need to start really believe, you know, and continue believing that really God loves you, He suffered and died for you. And, and He wants you to have a, a life and life more abundantly. So, brothers, all these things, He wants you to be reminded over and over again. And in the process of being reminded, and that's where the hearing and hearing of the Word of Christ, no? being reminded of this truth, of this salvation, of this righteousness, of who you are in Christ, because He wants you to build up your defenses, building up what's inside. He wants you to build up your defenses, it's like immune system. So that even if the virus gets into your body, you will not get sick or you will not be you know, pulled down by the virus. And so here, if you understand that this is the message of God, He's telling you right now that you don't worry about the virus, about your physical health, and you don't worry about your finances, which is actually the, the after effect of this calamity. You don't worry about your relationships, even if, you know, you have less interaction with your people that you love or uh, people that you care with. No? Don't worry about that because God is giving you the victory. No? You're going to reign over all these things. And that's your building up your defenses, reminding you and reminding you no? to... to to, to always remember of who you are in Christ, that you are already protected and you have this favor from God. And so, with that, every day, you spend more time meditating on God's Word, spending time with Him, talking to Jesus Christ. You know, you're building up your defenses. You're building up your immune system. You're building up your understanding of who you are in Christ and, and what Jesus already did for you. But you know, brothers and sisters, let me close by saying this, and I'm closing with this point. Your strongest defense is actually your offense. Let me say that again. Your strongest defense is actually your offense. In other words, if you remember, there were five items of defense. Only one item of offense. What is that item? The sword of the Spirit. And the Word of God says here that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. So, how do you make an offense as you have been building your defense? You, so, by God's grace, I believe you've been doing that. You've been reading, meditating on God's Word, spending time with God, and you've been building up your defenses. Okay? building up. But again, your best defense is your offense. Because actually with that, you're hitting two birds with one stone. 
So what does this mean? Use the sword of the Spirit, which is actually the Word of God. In other words, here in this case, the Word of God feeds you. Okay? Through the defenses, the, sal- the helmet of salvation, the belt of truth, you've been reminded over and over again of who you are in Christ, what Jesus did for you. You have been made righteous. Okay? Very good. And that strengthens you. In fact, if, we, if you remember, in a few Sundays ago, we've studied about how the Word of Christ brings peace. Okay? So, very good. You've been strengthened. You have been able to, you know, build yourself, your inner strength to make the defense. But don't stop there, brothers and sisters. And this is one is very important that you really understand and you apply after this. That you bring about the offense. Bring the Word of Christ. Bring the Word of God. Speak it. Use it over your circumstances. Over your health, you declare healing and good health and wholeness in your body using the Word of God. In your finances, declare that by Jesus' poverty, you are made rich. Even over your relationships, over what you do to those who are working, when you're working, even in, in whatever you do, at home. No? Speak over your circumstances. Every part of your life, every area of your life, use the Word of God. That's your sword of the Spirit. When you use that, no, like, you know, the devil has started to, you know, encroach over your body physically because, you know, like, you're getting sick, you're, you feel weak. Speak over your body. No? Use the Word of God, the Spirit, the sword of the Spirit. Use it over your body and it's an offense no? against the attack of the enemy and it will drive away Satan's sickness over your body, even over your finances. No? Use the Word of God. Declare the Word of God over your finances, over your relationship, over everything that you do. That's an offense, and that's the biggest defense that you can make, brothers and sisters. And so, how do you do that again? How do you do that? I remind you, you are a carrier. You are a carrier of the gospel of Christ. And so, Remind yourself and be reminded that in all these calamities, Christ is in the crisis. That, you know, He wants you to rise above and reign over the crisis that's happening right now in our world. And that you have confidence in Jesus Christ. Let me remind you once again, brothers and sisters, in Romans 5.17, it says there, much more. So this means this is something better. Much more. Those who receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. In other words, brothers and sisters, you and I today, we have received the abundance of God's grace, the undeserved favor that Jesus brought to us. And the gift of righteousness, we have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a gift. It's not by our own work, no. But it's a gift. You receive it, today you have been made righteous by the blood of Jesus. Brothers and sisters, today right now, understand that you are a carrier. And you are very infectious. Infectious of the love of God. And so I encourage you. When you go out, not go out physically because you are supposed to stay at home for a while. (laughs) But when you go out, especially online, on social media, or when you talk to your family at home, or relatives, or friends, or co-workers, or anybody, I encourage you, be infectious. Contaminate people with the love of God. In other words, if the enemy is very aggressive, infecting, no, so easy to get infected with the COVID-19, you do something better. You should be more inf- infectious and you should easily infect others. Even by just the sound of your voice, by just seeing you online, they should already remember that when they see you or hear you, your voice they get reminded that Jesus loves them. 
that God loves them so much and that there's nothing to worry about because victory is theirs. Amen? Come on, brothers and sisters. Are you, are you learning? Are you being reminded today of what resurrection really means? That you and I, today, as Jesus rose from the dead to enforce His finished work, the benefit for us, we are here to enforce the finished work of Jesus Christ upon others by using the sword of the Spirit. It's our offense so that we will bless people and infect them with the love of God. Thank you, Jesus, for using us. Praise God. Now, brothers and sisters, if you have received that revelation today, I encourage you, don't hesitate. Go, infect people. No? Use your online community so that you can infect people with the goodness of God. And I would not miss this opportunity to also invite you to pray this very important uh, prayer of faith in Jesus Christ. Come on, pray with me this simple prayer and say, Lord Jesus, you are my Savior. You suffered and died for me. Your wounds are for my healing. Your blood washed away my sins. You died, but now alive in victory. Now I can live your life of victory. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if you pray that prayer, I know that you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And I encourage you, continue reading the Bible. Continue spending time with Him, praying and believing in the goodness of God. Because God loves you so much. And so, brothers and sisters, of course, we will not end this service without our declaration before we end with a closing prayer let's have this declaration again of who we are in christ come on say this with me because we are the grace generation uh children of god let's declare i am in christ i am righteous because of christ's sacrifice i'm greatly blessed highly favored and deeply loved and why is that because jesus loves me amen praise the lord thank you jesus for loving us amen so Brothers and sisters, come on, uh, pray with me. Uh, please close your eyes, bow your heads as we close the service with a prayer. Father, thank you for Resurrection Sunday because what Jesus did, what you gave to Jesus' life again on the third day from death, his resurrection brought to us the enforcement of the benefit of Jesus' finished work on the cross. And so, Father, thank you for this revelation that all of us indeed are partakers of this salvation, of this resurrection, that we have received this benefit of salvation by giving us life and life more abundantly. But today also, we become the testimony of Jesus' resurrection, that to others we will enforce, Abba Father, the truth of what Jesus did on the cross, that all people who will believe and receive Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, shall receive life in eternity, eternal life, life more abundantly. And so, Father, thank you. And I pray for all my brothers and sisters right now who are receiving this revelation online, that I pray for them and declare over them your blessing, your protection, your healing, your abundance, your provision, your favor over them, Father, because you have loved them in great and mighty ways. Father, thank you that I know you have touched the hearts of my brothers and sisters and you have revealed to them your truth. Father, together with them, I stand putting on your complete armor, knowing that with this armor, I shall stand firm, victorious over the attacks of the enemy. And we will use the word, the, the sword of the Spirit, your word, Abba Father, to fight or to to drive away the enemy's attacks. And I pray, Father, that for all my brothers and sisters right now, wherever they are, that in the coming days, they shall continue to stand firm, trusting in you, overcoming, reigning over circumstances. And thank you, Father, for all the wonderful things you're doing for all of us. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you and we praise you. Amen, amen, and amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you so much. Happy Easter to all of you. Enjoy your Sunday and in the days to come, enjoying and receiving the victory and the blessing and the favor of God in your life. 
I'll see you next week online. God bless you. Enjoy your week.